All right, so at the end of the day yesterday, we had uh, just done, I think, number five here, where we had calculated the final position of the person using position is a change in, or sorry, displacement is a change in position. All right, so what we're going to look at now is kind of a few similar things, and then we're going to move into some more V equals D over T kind of calculations like you would have done in Science 10, and we'll kind of finish off the day with, with some of that and some practice and review of that kind of stuff. All right, um, now, for number six here, Okay, I want you guys to give number six a try. I don't think we got to that. You guys didn't get to that anyway. Okay, um, and I want you to calculate both the horizontal distance and the displacement of the ball okay, in this question. Now, the key here is you need to read the question. Don't just look at the diagram. The diagram is misleading unless you read the whole question. Okay, so kind of a lesson here. Reading the question is important. Okay, so have you guys, I'll give you a couple minutes to get try that one, and then we'll go through it together. All right, so the situation is these two kids are playing or using atuks, which are like traditional Inuit rackets that are strung not with strings, but with seal skin, which probably makes PETA like really happy. Okay, but that's, that's a traditional like game that they play. Okay, uh, so they're three meters apart and the ball starts with the person on the right. So the ball starts at purple shirt here. Okay, this is the initial position of the ball. The ball is tossed to the person in the green shirt and then the person in the green shirt puts it over this person and they have to run and catch it over here. So the final position is over on the far right. Okay, the initial position is person in the purple shirt. So what's the total displacement of the ball? Five meters to the right, right? Because it's a vector quantity of displacement needs a direction on it. Okay, what's the total distance traveled by the ball? 11 meters, okay? This is where you have to read the question carefully because otherwise people just look at the diagram and go three plus five is eight and then they think they're done except that the ball has traveled here and back again plus the other five meters, okay? So it's one of those kind of drawbacks to having a diagram on a question, okay? Like I, I love questions that have diagrams and I put them on there all the time but don't always rely on just the diagram. It often doesn't tell the whole story. Okay, so questions on any of that stuff? That's all that kind of final position minus initial position stuff. Okay, quick review here of like some algebra stuff to do with using V equals D over T. So in science 10, okay, you would have learned like the three rules of algebra, okay? The first rule of algebra is that if I want to move something, I have to perform the opposite operation. So if I'm adding, I would subtract. If I'm dividing, I would multiply. Okay, the second rule of algebra is whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side of the equation. And the third rule of algebra is move what's not attached to what you're looking for first. That won't apply to this one because it's only three variables. Okay, but if you have like uh, multiplication and addition in the same formula, then you would apply that rule. If I was looking for, you know, let's say it's y equals mx plus b, for example. Okay, if I was looking for M, I would move what's not attached to M first, that would be B. Okay, so I'd move B first and then I would move X. That's where that third rule applies. It doesn't apply here. Okay, all right. So then if I want to calculate D, what do I have to move? I think T, okay. How do I move T? What operation do I perform? Right, multiply t over to on but whoops on both sides. Okay, so t comes over here. Everyone all right with that? Okay, so I multiply both sides by t. Okay, if I want to solve for t, what do I have to do? Pardon me. Multiply both sides by V. If I multiply both sides, okay. So here's what I would have to do, okay? Because a lot of people want to do this. They want to say, well, I'd just divide both sides by D and bring, bring D down here. And then I would have V divided by D and then I would have T by itself, except that, yeah, T is by itself, but I have a one there now, right? Because I divided D divided by D. Well, D over D is one. I'm not solving for T. I'm solving for 1 over t if I do that, and I don't want to do that. 
Okay, so what I want to do instead is move t over here and then bring v here. Now I'm solving for t not on the bottom of an, of an equation. So whenever you solve for something, make sure it's not on the bottom of a division operation. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay. All right. Does that ring a bell for everybody? I mean, I assume that if you got the physics 20, the algebra and science 10 didn't bother you very much. Okay. Because that's the easiest formula you will manipulate all year long. Okay. By the end of the year, you'll be manipulating things like this. Or yeah, it looks intimidating now, but don't worry, you'll get it when you get there. Okay, but yeah, okay. V equals d over t is the easiest thing that you will manipulate, okay, throughout the year here this year. So, um, yeah, you're gonna have to brush up on those algebra skills if they're a little bit rusty. Okay, here's one that you would have done, okay, something very much like in science 10. All right, it's a V equals D over T question, but the trip in this question has two parts, okay? In part of the question, the garbage truck is traveling north, and in part of the question is traveling south, all right? So what we have to remember about a question like this is this formula that is V equals D over T, okay, that is velocity is displacement over time, is actually total displacement over total time. So we need information about not just the individual parts of the trip, but the trip as a whole as well. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes and see how much of Science 10 you remember, okay? Because if you were in my Science 10 class, you did this question. It was on your unit exam, actually. Okay, so have a, have a try at this one, okay? And I'll give you a few minutes there, see how much you remember. So the first thing we want to do is write down what the question gives us, which means I actually have to break this up into three parts. I have to say, I'm going to deal with part one, I'm going to deal with part two, and then the totals. Okay. In part one, I know that the garbage truck travels at four meters per second north. So they told me the velocity, 4.0 meters per second north. And it does that for 12 and a half seconds. Right. That's all I know for part one. Okay. For part two, it travels 26 meters south, so that's a displacement. Okay. 26 meters south, at, and it does that at 16. Sorry, that's a 16. If you used six, you're going to get a slightly different answer than me, but 16. Okay. At 16 meters per second. Okay. And that's also south, and that's all I'm given for part two. Now, if I want to calculate average velocity, I need the total distance and, or sorry, the total displacement and the total time. I don't have the displacement for part one and I don't have the time for part two, but can I calculate them? Right? I can just use V equals D over T for each part in order to get what I don't have. So to calculate D, I'm going to go V times T, All right? So 12 and a half times four times four equals 50 meters north. All right, so now I've got the displacement for part one. Okay, in part two, all right, I'm looking for the time, so that's going to be d over v, and we're going to go 26 meters divided by 16 meters per second. That'll give us the time. It's 1.625, is that right? Okay, seconds. I didn't do that in my head. I remember it from the last period. Don't be impressed by my math ability. I don't do math in my head, okay? I, but I, I can memorize like nobody's business. Okay, so now I've got those numbers there. Now I can get total displacement and total time over here. So I'm going to say again, average velocity is total displacement over total time. So that's going to be 50 meters north plus 26 meters south. Okay, I have to put in positive and negative because I can't use north and south in math, right? I've got to have um, mathematical operators instead. Okay, and then on the bottom, I'm going to put the two times together, 12 and a half seconds plus 1.625 seconds. Now, how come I didn't make the 1.625 negative? Right, I'm not going backwards in time. I'm driving backwards, 
okay? I'm not driving a 1984 DeLorean, okay? 88 miles an hour backwards, okay? I am just driving backwards in a big garbage truck. So I'm not going back in time, time can't be negative, okay? All right, so we've got these numbers here. So I got 50 plus negative 26 or 50 minus 26. I've got 24 meters north, okay? And on the bottom, I've got 14.125 um, seconds. Right now, I can calculate my average velocity over the whole trip. So I'll be whoop. So 24 divided by 14.125, and it gives me 1.7. Okay, yeah, we've only got two significant figures here, so 1.7. Um, meters per second north. Okay. Is that ringing a bell? Okay. You probably saw a few of those like that last year. Okay. So I'm going to have you practice with some kind of easier ones first and then kind of progress back to ones like this, but I wanted to show you one of the full meal deal ones here first, okay, and then um, we'll have you try some more like that in a few minutes. All right, so in your worksheet booklet, okay, you will find the first um, thing that I'm going to have you work on. Okay. All right, which is, okay, these questions here. All right, so they're on, uh, that's page two, okay, of your worksheet booklet file, okay, that was, I put on in the stream last night. So if you still haven't joined Google Classroom, make sure you do that because that's where you're going to get this stuff. Okay, I'll make it a little bigger so it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, the answers are in bold, so you can check and see if you're doing it right as you go. All right, and then I'll go through a few, okay, here in a few minutes after you get ahead of me, okay, we can go over any ones that are giving us trouble, okay, but we'll just kind of stretch out our algebra muscles a little bit here since we probably haven't used them for a while. Okay, okay guys, uh, one thing you do need to watch for, because it will happen in question number three, is that you need to make sure that your units match. Okay, if you're doing a V equals D over T calculation and you've got uh, a V that's in meters per second, but a D that's in kilometers, you can't divide kilometers by meters per second. They're not the same thing. So you'll have to convert the kilometers most likely into meters, okay, in order to save yourself the, the bother, right? Otherwise, you're probably going to get like a small decimal number that doesn't look right. Okay. Uh, so make sure that your units are matching. Okay. If you've got one thing that's measured in meters, everything that has meters in it has to be in, anything that has distance in it has to be in meters. Okay. So just make sure your units all match. All right, so for number three here, okay, we have a bus that travels with um, 11 kilometers. So this is a multi-part trip. So we're gonna treat this kind of like the example we did. Okay. And we're gonna say that in part one, the displacement, actually it's just, they don't tell us the direction, so it's not displacement, it's actually distance, okay? 11 kilometers, okay? Uh, with an average velocity of 21 meters per second, um, but they don't tell us direction, so that's actually a typo. That should just be speed, okay, of 21 meters per second. Um, and then it travels in part two, okay? One kilometer um, at a smaller velocity of, so sorry, distance is one kilometer, and the smaller velocity of 4.2, meters per second, okay? Uh, determine the average velocity over the whole trip. So just like what we did before, we have to find the total displacement and total time. We can't just add the two velocities together and divide by two, okay? I know that you've been taught your whole life that that's how you calculate averages, but that assumes that all the things you're adding together represent equal parts of the whole. In the case of this trip, is one part of this trip way more of the whole than the other? Okay, so as, as a result, we have to weight it, okay? And when, when we go total distance over total time, we're actually weighting it, okay, in favor of the heavier part of the trip. All right, so um, our total uh, distance, we need to put in meters because we already said we can't have kilometers and meters in the same uh, calculation. So we'll have here that our total distance is 12,000 kilometers, or sorry, 12,000 meters, not kilometers, 12,000 meters, and that our um, our total time, we don't know. We have to find it. 
Okay, and we have to find the time for each one of the two parts. So T equals D over V. So we'll have uh, 11 over 21. Okay, so we're looking at 0.5238. Okay, and that'll be um, seconds. Sorry, 11,000, doofus. Okay, sorry, 11,000. That's going to be a lot bigger. I think it's going to be 523.8. Yeah? 523.8. Okay, seconds. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, same thing over here. We're going to go 1,000 meters divided by 4.2. Whoop. Okay, so we're looking at 238.1, we'll say. All right, so now our total time will be our 523 plus uh, 238. So we're looking at, um, I'm not going to try and do that in my head. Okay, plus 523.8. Okay, 768.8 now. Well, we have to reflect. We have to keep as many things as we haven't gone over significant yeah, figures yet. Okay. Okay. Um, so, whoops. So, 761.8. 761.8. And there will be a few others. Okay. Again, we haven't talked about significant figures yet, but you probably did that. And um, maybe you've done that. Maybe you haven't. Well, we'll talk about that. You keep all your figures until the very end and then round. Um, so, that's our total time. Now we can calculate the average, not uh, velocity, but average speed over the whole trip. And I think it actually says average speed in your file now, right? I think I changed that actually. Um, anyway, we'll have 12,000 over that number and that will give us our okay, 16 meters per second to two significant figures. Okay, so you got, what'd you say you got? One fifteen point or one? Okay, did you convert this to 11,000 or 1,100? Yeah, no, I have the Must have typed something in wrong, yeah. Okay, uh, so when we round, it rounds to 16 to two significant figures. Again, I'll talk about significant figures next week, all right? Does that one make sense? Any others we need to go over? Okay, because uh, what have we got left here? We got, oh, we still got some time. So you guys can keep working on that. Okay. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got a 60 kilometer trip. That's the total, all right? So we're actually gonna start over here with total. Okay, in terms of writing down our givens, and we know that the total displacement is 60 kilometers, uh, and that's uh, north. Okay, and we know that the average velocity for the whole trip is uh, 40 kilometers per hour, also north. Okay, the trip consists of three parts. So now I'm going to start filling in the parts. So part one, okay, is um, 25 kilometers per hour for 15 kilometers. Okay, and then in part two, right, we know um, that it goes 62 kilometers per hour. And that's for 32 kilometers. Right, and then we have part three. And all we know about part three is that it's 13 kilometers long. Okay, so if I'm going to find out how fast, or at what velocity, I should say, the car is traveling in part three, what else do I need to know about part three? I need to know how long it took. Okay, now here's the thing. I don't have the time for part two, and I don't have the time for part one, but I can find them because I have both D and V for both. All right, so T will be D over V, so that'll be 15 over 
25. Okay? And this is going to come out in hours because that's what we're using here. Okay? So 15 divided by 25. So part one takes 0. 0.6 hours. All right, and part two, same calculation, T equals D over V. So that'll be 32 over 62. Okay, so it's 0. 0.516 hours. All right, so I know two out of the three. Can I also find out how long the whole trip takes? Okay, so I'm going to go over here and do again the same calculation, T equals D over V, but now use the information for the whole trip. 60 over 40 is 1.5 hours. Okay, so the whole trip's one and a half hours, and I have two out of the three parts. I can figure out then how long part three takes by adding these two and then subtracting them from one and a half hours. Okay, so I'll have 1.5 minus uh, 0 0.516 minus 0 0.6. Okay. So the last part takes 0 0.384 hours. Okay, so now that I know the time, I can now find V by going V equals D over T for the last part. So that'll be 13 over 0.384, and that should give me 34 kilometers per hour north. Okay, so it's convoluted, but you can get there. Till the end of class. Oh, no, because we'll start graphing on Monday. Yeah, or Tuesday, not Monday. Don't come on Monday. I won't be here either.